Hello, viewers, and welcome back to the Sports Lovers Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Brock Marucci. With me, as always, is my incredible co-host, Hunter Nisley. Hunter, how are you doing? Uh, Mr. Brock, I am. I'm fantastic, sir. Thank you for having me once again, of course. Uh, I'm really excited for today's episode, and uh, I'm, I'm just happy to see your face. <laughs> I'm happy to see yours as well. So college football is over, NFL is over, baseball starting. But what we're thinking about right now is the big dance, baby. We're here to talk about some college basketball as well as the NCAA tournament. Um, first bit of news we have here is that Jimmy Beheim of Syracuse basketball retires. Uh, they lost today. To, we're recording this on March 8th. They lost today to the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 77-74. to They had a two-point lead at halftime. They couldn't keep it. And... Jimmy Beheim decided to retire after that and heck of a career at Syracuse. And, um, and Nisley, what do, you, what do you got for this uh, retirement of Jimmy Beheim? Just what, what's on your mind with that? Yes, sir. Jim Beheim retires. Of course, a, a legend in the coaching world of college basketball. Uh, but, you know, he's been, he's, he's been a little testy recently. He's been a little sassy uh, with the media, with student reporters, with everybody. Uh, so, I don't want to say I'm necessarily happy to move on from Jim Beheim, but I think it was it was more than time, uh, especially with the last couple of years they've struggled a little bit, and you know I'm excited to just to head in a different direction for Syracuse basketball, and you know maybe are maybe they're not going to play their two three zone anymore. We'll, oh you know, yeah. We'll find, we'll find out for sure next year if that's still going to be a thing or not, but um. I, I think brighter days ahead for for the men's basketball program. Yeah, I was I was uh, just thinking recently. Uh, you know, we had uh, Mike Shashevsky retire recently. We had um, Roy Williams retire recently. Um, Mike Bray of Notre Dame basketball will retire at the end of this season. And I was trying to keep in mind. I was like, what coaches are still around? And I was like, oh, you know, Tony Bennett at Virginia, and then Jimmy Beheim, and then now he retires too. So uh, as far as you know the ACC goes which uh, I also think those a lot of those teams have been huge in college basketball and this will tie into a later topic of I think basketball you know the ACC and basketball in general is in a little bit of a transitional phase with a lot of new faces coming in a lot of new teams or rather teams we don't usually see are kind of stepping up into that spotlight yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Also, can we we might be able to still throw Rick Pitino in there because he is oh, technically right. coaching, just, just not in the ACC anymore. He's coaching at at Iona, but you know, a, a Louisville legend, Rick Pitino, yeah. is still. Hey, you know, maybe maybe Rick Pitino goes to Syracuse. You never know. Oh, Although boy. they did just they did just uh, announce their assistant will be the head coach. But listen, you can still pay Rick Rick Pitino if you want. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a little bit. It's a little bit odd, just the guys that we grew up with and seeing that the you know the normal faces in college basketball. It's definitely a little bit of a different landscape now, and there's still some familiar faces out there. You know, uh, faces that you can recognize even outside the ACC. You know, you've got you've got Patrick Ewing at Georgetown. John Shire took over for Duke this year after uh, Coach K retired. So still some familiar faces, but uh, there's definitely been. A, a, a change just around college basketball and, and some of where success is being had now in college basketball. Yeah. And I, I just happened to see that uh, apparently with Jimmy Beheim uh, retiring, the winningest coach right now is, do you know who it is? Rick Pitino. It is not Rick Pitino. It's, <laughs> it's actually, now I was actually pretty surprised by this. It's actually uh, Bob Huggins of oh. West Virginia. Interesting. So okay. yeah. So good for, Good for him. I believe they are uh, continuing their quest through the Big 12 tournament right now. So, I mean, hey, good for him. And that's to me, that's a little bit of a – that's a big surprise, honestly. Maybe he's just been coaching for so yeah. long. I didn't get a chance to go into the details of that. Yeah, he's been there for a while. I probably – my next guess is probably would have been like Mark Few at Gonzaga or maybe, you know, Bill Self at Bill Kansas. Self. But... That, that Bill Self would have been my guess. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, good for Bob Huggins. You know, they've – uh, West Virginia, it's a tough place to play, man. That's some hard nosed defense they play at West Virginia. Yeah. I you don't you don't want to be a part of a team going to going to play at West Virginia, <laughs> I tell you that. But yeah, so there goes uh Jimmy Beheim and 
not exactly the way you want to go out, but you know, sooner or later yeah. you got to say, this is it. So yeah, so I, you maybe, maybe waited a tad bit too long to retire, but Hey, still had a very good career, you know, won a national championship. I think it was 2003 with Carmelo Anthony. So still, still a heck of a career and still a lot of accomplishments that he had. Yeah. All right. Moving on to our next topic. Uh, Apparently, there's been some rumors about the expansion of the NCAA tournament. I, for one, think that should not happen at all. Uh, I do support new ideas, thinking how can maybe we can change this. Maybe there's a chance there is a way to make this, you know, better, quote unquote. But to me, the the NCAA tournament is pretty much bulletproof. You know, it it I just don't see any reason. I don't think adding more teams really um i just think that makes it way too long i, I don't really think that i mean it gives, it gives other schools uh, an opportunity which is always nice and you want to see that but it just seems like how many more opportunities do you need in a tournament like this like uh, I, I just feel like anybody who who makes it it just about everyone deserves to be there what are your thoughts on that nicely yeah i mean it's already every conference champion you know is already represented there and then uh there's about 32 or so, 32 or 36 at-large bids that go out as well. Um, you know, uh, it sounds like if it is going to be expanded, it'll it'll likely only sp- – right now they're at 68 teams. It would maybe go to 72. They would add an extra four, uh, four teams in there for a couple extra games. But I feel like if you do go to 72, uh, you, you can't just keep going. You can't add – you know, four more here, four more there again, because eventually we're, you're, there's just too many teams. There's teams that are not very good making the tournament then at that point who didn't truly earn it, you know, uh, a team like a team like North Carolina, who is struggling this year would sneak their way in as like the last team in, uh, if, if it continues to expand. So I, I think where they're at now is kind of a sweet spot. Um, I think 64 was honestly the sweet spot, but I understand them wanting, you know, a little more juice, a, a little bit more to happen. So they had, now they have those first four games. Um, I, I think it's a couple of 16 seeds will play each other, but then there's a couple of the uh, four teams, the last four teams in on the bubble will play each other as well uh, to see if they actually truly make the big dance at that point. So Yeah, and this sort of ties into one of our, previous podcasts of like you know these are these are still just kids in college you know they're they're trying to go to school as well you know some of them are genuinely trying their best to get their degree and you know if you make that ncaa tournament you're and you add those teams you're going to be playing forever like that's that's a, that's like a never-ending season almost it just seems like it just seems like too much and, and you know i definitely love that that first day you know, the first two days of the tournament, it's just crazy. You know, game after game, we get upset after upset. Like, you love that. But I think if you just kept doing that, eventually it would lose its luster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, eventually you're going to have these these top teams are going to be playing, you know, the teams, these low conferences, these mid-major conferences, they're going to be playing their their number five team in their conference, yeah. their number six team in their conference. And it's going to be like, all right, well, at least – at least with the conference champion going, you know, you're getting, you're at least getting a quality team there. You know, you don't want to be playing, you know, if Loyola, Maryland or something in the first round who didn't deserve to be there, you know? Yeah. So, and so I, I just can't see them going much, much farther past maybe four more teams at like a max. And almost, and it almost seems like at that point, you're just like, you're just trying to fill spots. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're just like, okay, well, who's, who's left like we got to throw anybody in there like we we set up this thing and now like we just have to throw teams in there yeah listen the the majority of the big tens already going to be there like you can't just keep throwing you can't throw minnesota in there you know the buckeyes are having a down year you just you know you can't include the entirety of the big 10 <laughs> at, at this point there's already about nine of them going out of 14 so yeah they, it's just an excuse they, they they want more big 10 excellence here uh in the big dance <laughs> represent the big 10 also uh you know our favorite people Rutgers basketball you know they definitely want to see them in there Rutgers basketball you know i gave them a shout out a couple weeks ago and at that point in time they were pretty much a lock 
in the uh, in the NCAA basketball tournaments. They had a big win over Penn State. Won by they were down 19, came back and won at Penn State, and they've crumbled since then. Right now, they are the they're still considered uh, to be in, but they are the second to last team in at this uh-huh. point. The team they beat, Penn State, is now above them. Is <laughs> currently safer than Rutgers basketball. So I'm just doing my job here as a Penn State fan, trying, <laughs> trying to, to curse the Scarlet Knights. Their football program is already cursed. You know, we're trying to continue the curse onto the basketball program as well. But still, shout out Rutgers basketball. They're still having a good year. They've The last couple of years, they've really turned it around. They've they've made themselves, you know, a viable program in, in college basketball, which is, a, which is always good to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and real quick here, um, I wanted to touch on the top 25 of college basketball. Now, for a while, uh, the top 25, I think, in college basketball is, I think it's good for the program itself, but when you look at the picture as a whole, it's sort of like we said before, like, a ton of these teams are going to the national, or sorry, to the NCAA tournament, but... I'm looking at now. I haven't been able to keep up with college basketball as much over the past couple of years. I've watched very little this year. I did watch um, Iowa and Michigan State when Iowa came back to force overtime and win. Heck of a game there. But uh, I'm looking at this top 25, and I don't know about you, Hunter, but there's a ton of teams. I'm like, like Houston is number one. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like Houston hoops. Uh, UCLA basketball is back. They're number two. Now we got bad. for now. For now, UCLA back for now. Yeah, um, Kansas. No, you got Kansas. That's that's pretty standard. But then it's like Alabama's number four. What is this? You know, college football. Mm-hmm. Purdue. They kind of you know number six. They fluctuate there. Mar- Marquette. Bit of a nice season for Marquette here. Um, smart baby. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's pretty exciting for the sport. Seeing teams like, you know, Houston. You know, when we were in high school, you know, six seven years ago. Um, Again, this would have been like Virginia. It would have been Duke. It would have been North Carolina. We would have had a, t- a lot of teams like that, and you know Kansas would have still been there. But uh, it's really, I think it's really nice to just see like a, a lot of different programs here uh, getting some love. You got Gonzaga number nine. That's pretty standard. Yeah, there's. Um, I, I think it's a cool thing in college basketball. There's there's a bit more parity than uh, than a lot of other sports you could say, especially professional sports. And I mean, college football right now, parity has been kind of hard to come by in recent years. Um, but yeah, having, having a team like Houston be, at, you know, ranked number one and number two, they've been there most of the year now uh, they've had a really, really solid season. And, you know, having, having a team like Marquette really made a nice jump this year as well. There's, you know, Indiana has been really good this year. UCLA has been killing it. They've, they've at least in the last couple of years are back. Uh, well, they're back for now, at least. Uh, but even Kansas State's up there this year. Uh, Tennessee and UConn are, are, are always generally somewhere in the mix. Xavier's up there this year. Um, it's been fun. It's been a good time. Alabama has been killing it this year. Um, although some controversy surrounding the program right now with some, some not great stuff, but they're still out there playing well and playing hard. But, uh, you know, I'm just waiting for the for when Penn State's back in the top 25. They were there in 2020 for a little bit, yeah. and then COVID happened, and our dreams of an NCAA tournament appearance were taken away from us in 2020. But there's still there's a chance this year still. Yeah, and what they they still had Pat Chambers at the time, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Pat and, Chambers was still at the helm, yes. Yeah. Um, also, I just looked over here at, uh, like, Kentucky. Kentucky, number 20, uh, only number 23, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, that kind of stuff is uh, like unbelievable to see. Yeah, it, there's been kind, there's been a shift in, in college basketball, especially um, there's kind of like a a big three in conferences right now. It's the Big Ten, it's the SEC, and it's the Big Twelve. And for a long time, especially the SEC was kind of like it's Kentucky, and then just everybody else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. like Florida would sometimes pop up there, or Tennessee would pop up there. But there was there was an extended period of time where it was just you know it was just Kentucky and they were there were talks of like maybe SEC is a one two maybe three bid league you know um, but right now 
especially the ACC and the Pac-12 are, especially the Pac-12, but the ACC and Pac-12 are kind of down bad right now. Uh, ACC has right now projected five teams uh, in the tournament, and it's it, things just don't look good. You know, UNC is currently projected out of the tournament. You know, Duke has had a little bit of a down year, um, but they're still you know they're still playing well enough you know to be there. Uh, but a team like a team like Clemson is one of the top teams in the ACC this year, and they're they're not even in the the first four out. They're currently in the next four out at the moment. You know, Pitt basketball is on the good side of the bubble right now, but they've been one of the top teams uh, in the ACC. And these one of their top teams is on the bubble. It's not it's not great. But I tell you what, Brock, the Pac-12. Oh, the Pac-12 was not good. <laughs> not good, Mr. Brock. <laughs> Especially. So they've got a projected three teams set to make the tournament, one of them being UCLA, one of them being USC, one of them being Arizona. And the bad part about this for the Pac-12 is two of those three teams are about to go to the Big Ten oh, in the next couple of years. Yeah, so They're losing UCLA. They're losing USC. So if take them away... The Mountain West Conference is projected for four teams oh. to be in the in the dance right now, which Jeez. is more than the Pac-12. Yeah. The West Coast Conference has Gonzaga and St. Mary's, who would be powerhouses right now in the Pac-12, and they're they're in the West Coast Conference. They're playing San Francisco and Pepperdine <laughs> every other night. You know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Like, uh, it's just it's a mess. The Pac-12 is a mess, Brock. I don't know. I don't know what you do. San Diego State, Boise State would be powerhouses in the Pac-12 right yeah. now. Like, you know, they're it's it's not good. I mean, they they might be they're probably like the the seventh best conference in college basketball, oh. and they've got they've got some of the biggest schools out there too. So, not not good, not good for the Pac-12, but good for the Mountain West, good for the West Coast Conference, good for some of these mid-major teams. Yeah, that's part of this. That's part of the shift right now in college hoops. You know, the teams like, like San Diego State has really made a name for themselves. And, of course, Gonzaga and St. Mary's have become – Gonzaga is a perennial contender already. St. Mary's not quite in, not quite a contender, but they're there. They're going to be probably a, a, a four or a five seed this year, and they're going to make some noise. And they're going to continue to make noise because they've got an awesome program out there. Yeah. They've got a better program than most teams out west right now. So lots happening. So it's it's a it's a weird time but a fun time for college basketball i'd say yeah definitely and you know no oregon no utah like mm -hmm. in basketball um i just saw um whenever this was on uh, gonzaga they they just uh, won their championship and apparently they won by like it was the largest margin of victory in the history of the tournament and the end up in that tournament so good for them um yeah i Pac-12, Pac-12, the future of it is looking real rough, especially after, like, it, as far as football goes. You know, this past season was a, was a pretty good year for the Pac-12, but again, like you said, a lot of those teams are doing well. Like, they're out of there. Um, I also saw, let's see here, congratulations to teams like uh, like Furman. I saw Furman made it. You know, they won their championship. Um, yes, sir. And the what, Louisiana, I think. Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah, Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah, yes. It's good for them. Um, North Carolina, they won today against Boston College. Pretty well against Boston College. Uh, tomorrow at 7, they're facing Virginia, which it depends on what version of Virginia shows up. I think Virginia can be very good and can win the national championship, but there's always been that, like, something about Tony Bennett's teams. Like they'll they'll stall out, you know. We saw mm -hmm. it, you know. We've seen it many times in the ACC tournament. We saw it when they were the first team to lose to a 16 seed as a one seed. Um, so I don't know. And hey, you know, they're always looking for that. Tar, they're always looking for that Tar Heel magic to kind of just come out. I think if they just come out and play with energy right from the start, just for two halves, I don't know if Virginia will be able to recover from that, but. Uh, do you think so? Do you, would you say North Carolina? Do you think they have to win the ACC to get in? Is that what you're? Is that what you're thinking right now? 
as, as of right now, it's kind of what it seems like. You know, they, they did beat Virginia recently. That's their, that's their only quad one win of the year. Um, it was against Virginia a couple of weeks ago. Um, but right now, because, because of how the ACC set up, uh, they're not having a great year, you know, for even if North Carolina makes a run, you know, some of these, if they get to the championship game and lose, I don't know if there's enough for them to, to jump teams like Oklahoma state, like Rutgers, for instance, like a Penn state or a Pittsburgh or a Nevada. There's just not enough juice there for them, you know, but you know, North Carolina did this last year. You know, they, they were projected still, they were right on the bubble there for a while. They were still projected in, but then they made their magical run to the final four, you know? So anything can happen. It's a talented team. It's not, it's not like they got, it's not like they don't have talent there in, in North Carolina. They yeah. have some of the best talent in the country and they just haven't been able to put it together. But you know what happens at Chapel Hill. Good things, <laughs> Good things generally happen. Yep. happen. Yes. All right. How about uh, Penn State men's basketball? What are you thinking for them? They're facing Illinois tomorrow at six thirty. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I look. I root for Penn State basketball. Like I want them to win, but I am also a doubter. I will be honest. I am not. Like I'm really not feeling great about this one. Um, do you have any? What What are your thoughts on that, Nisley? Yeah. So the Nittany Lions taking on Illinois. They are 2-0 and against Illinois this year, but it is extremely hard to beat a team a third time. A third just, time, yeah. To truly sweep somebody, uh, and especially in the Big Ten. The Big Ten, every year, they just eat each other alive. There's a, there's a reason that there are nine Big Ten teams currently slotted to make the big dance, but about five of those are on the bubble or close to it because they're all 500 in conference play because they just... You know, it's hard to succeed in the Big Ten. But, you know, Penn State has had a really solid season, one of their best seasons to date. You know, Jalen Pickett, made uh, he's a second-team All-American. It's Penn State's first All-American in almost 70 years, which is unbelievable. Almost 70 years since they had a uh, All-American. But they play a really interesting style. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. I believe they're top 10 in three-point percentage. And they play a lot of small ball and they just, they seem to match up really well against Illinois of all teams too. Uh, their, their wings are Penn state has some very athletic wings. So it'll be really interesting. It's pretty much, they live and die by the three point ball. If they're making threes. They're probably going to win. They're probably going to beat Illinois. And then they will go on to, t- to take on Northwestern after that, another team Penn state has beaten. But when the threes are not falling, you know, that's when things can stall. Like when they lost to Rutgers a couple of weeks ago, Penn State didn't make a basket the final nine minutes of that game. Oh my goodness! Nine minutes with no buckets is a recipe for disaster. Yes. That's how you blow a 19-point lead. So it's going to be really interesting. But even if they do happen to lose, they're still in a, a relatively good spot. You know, obviously you don't want to lose no. because you're on the bubble. Anything can happen. But a win over Illinois pretty much locks them into the tournament for the first time since 2011. A loss, I still think you feel generally confident, but you know there could be some bid stealers out there like North Carolina. They could make a run, all of a sudden win the ACC. Now they're taking up a spot they weren't projected to in the field, so that's bumping everybody back a spot. So you never know what can happen. You know, maybe a surprise team in the Pac-12 comes, like like Oregon, for instance, is is on the bad side of the bubble right now, but they could very well make a run. They could be another bid stealer. So. You always want to win in March. You just got to you got to take care of business because you don't want to be keeping your fingers crossed on Selection Sunday. Yeah, I definitely. If I'm looking at this like you you have to beat Illinois. I think I definitely think you, they have to beat Northwestern too. I don't know. I, I definitely don't. You, you know, you don't want to leave anything up to chance here. Like mm-hmm. this is definitely like all the things we're saying. Like North Carolina could go on a run. Like regardless of how well or badly North Carolina is doing. A team like Penn State basketball does not want to sit here like, well, hopefully North Carolina doesn't do well. Like those, that does not, you know, bode well for them. Uh, I I really think like an under underrated part of the season is the conference championship uh, mm-hmm. games. You know, played back to back, like kind of done quickly to get to the championship game. But there have been some really great games. I think they've kind of just been forgotten, so to speak, just because we're just trying so hard to get to the the big dance 
yeah yeah the conference championships are they're tons of fun i mean it's almost it's essentially it's for a lot of these teams this is their this is their do or die um especially a team on the bubble they are going out there and they are doing absolutely everything they can you can see the desperation when they're playing you know there's there's a different there's a different mentality there's there's a different kind of intensity that you play with when you know if you lose your season's over especially for for some of these upperclassmen these these may be some of the last basketball games they ever play so it's it's really fun and and it's really it's a really good time to watch some of these some of these lower level teams just come out there and they just throw every everything at whoever they're playing especially yeah. if it's one of these top seeds i mean they're going to push them to their limit at least to the best of their abilities and sometimes crazy stuff happens that's the beautiful thing about march is march is crazy especially in college basketball because anything can happen it's mostly all single elimination and it's just it's unreal it's so much fun we saw hey saint peter's last year making a run in the big dance mm-hmm. 15 seed getting to the elite eight only to lose to the North Carolina Tar Heels, baby. <laughs> yeah, I um re- remember like, and there's some crazy storylines too. Like, remember this was this was a while ago when uh, Michigan basketball their their plane almost crashed, and uh, they had to like play in their practice uniforms because that's all they had, mm-hmm. and and then they went on a magical run as well. They they ended up, I believe, they ended up winning the Big Ten that year, and at least yep. made it to the Final Four or the championship. So those storylines can carry on into the NCAA uh, tournament. So that's great to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I remember that playing in their practice jerseys was, was pretty incredible. That was pretty cool. It was, it was a weird look. If you didn't understand what happened, you just saw these guys in pennies. It looked like it was a, (laughs) you know, it looked like a true practice Mm -hmm. because they just didn't look ready to play, but yeah, but they were fun, fun times. Um, Brock, what do you, what do you think makes, uh, obviously, you know, it's it's uh, there's a lot of underdogs, you know, a lot of David versus Goliath type of things that we see, you know, in the NCAA tournament. But what is it about college basketball and just March in general that is so exciting as a fan, whether you're a diehard fan or a casual fan? Like you said, those first two days of the NCAA tournament, it's some of the best sports you can watch. You know what? What what it for you is so exciting about it? Well, yeah, for me personally, it's. It's great to see uh, a lot of different teams. What teams do we not usually hear about getting a chance to make a run? Um, you know, I love seeing the the buzzer beaters. You know, I you know I believe there's there's something in the air. There's something in the mindset. There's you, know, you can you can say whatever you want, how to, however people rationalize it. But the when you make the championship, it's like everyone says one and done. You have no idea what's going to happen. Um, I think pe- people love, now I haven't made a bracket for a while, but people love making the brackets. You know, who who sits down and analyzes everything or who's just like flipping a coin and picking their teams, who gets uh, the best of that. I just think it's great seeing, uh, like in that first day, like I was saying before, like it's so fun to just see like the first game starts and then you have all the different scores, and it's it, to me, it's just so exciting. You know, I love seeing all of that happen um, at once, and then the call, also like the calls. We have a lot. We're gonna hear a lot of great calls coming up. Um, I just love how hectic and chaos uh, chaotic it is. That's that's to try to sum it all up. I I really just love the, you know, um, we pick this team to go this far. And they just got beat by Loyola, Maryland, or something like that. And like, yeah. so, you know, or Temple's taking Iowa into overtime and crazy plays like that. So, yeah, that's to sum it up the chaos of it. That's that's really what I the like chaos. so much. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, chaos. Wesley? Yeah, I agree honestly with pretty much everything you said. The chaos is a beautiful thing. Uh, you mentioned there's it's like there's something in the air. You know, you can almost like smell it. It's there. There's some. There is truly something in the air with March basketball. Um, it's just, it's so much fun. And the, like you said, it's one and done. It's it's survive in advance. You know, that's that's truly the mentality of all these teams. It's like whether it's a one versus sixteen, whether it's an eight versus nine, or you know, a a, a five versus twelve. It doesn't matter. Like there are 
it's just a desperation. You got to you have to win just this one game, and you can move on, and you can, and you get to the next game. It's like we just got to get through this one team. We got to win this one game, just to move on. And uh, the excitement is there. It's it's almost like a sports holiday. Now, especially just that first weekend of of, of uh, I think I believe it usually starts on a Thursday. Uh, Thursday and Friday is the first round. Saturday, Sunday is the second round, and it's just. Anything can happen. Anything and everything will happen. You're going to see all sorts of crazy things. Like, uh, I remember Northern Iowa was playing Texas. I think this was close to a decade ago. They're down 10 points with a minute to go. They're full court pressing. A couple steals here, a couple steals, steals there, some missed free throws from Texas. Before you know it, Northern Iowa is taking down Texas in the first round after being down 10 with a minute to go. Right. Um, and we saw we saw a 16 seed win for the first time a few years ago over Virginia UMBC. Um, you, we see all the time the five versus 12 upset, which is it's it's almost hard to call that one an upset because it's usually a above average uh, <laughs> high major team versus like the best mid major teams yeah, that, yeah. that you see. So some of these some of these 12 seeds realistically should be like four or five seeds in this tournament, anyways, but. It's so much fun, man. It's 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 so much fun to watch, and like you see a lot of teams you don't normally get to watch. Sometimes these runs in in March will boost guys' resumes to go to the NBA too. All of a sudden, you know, you might see guys getting drafted in late first round or second round after they made a crazy March run, and they just got some, you know, they got more eyes on them. So there's so many good things that come out of it. Schools get recognition schools get a little bit more money the programs do um now with nil you know making a big run in march who we're going to maybe see some some big things with nil come come for a lot of these players and these student athletes there's not nothing but good things that come out of this yeah i agree and um and you have those teams like uh like uconn always a dangerous team if, if they make mm-hmm. the tournament you i feel like just about anyone believes like no matter what that team could go to the national championship. They just have that, you know, that mentality you have like, um, Oh, well, there was like, um, I can't remember the team. The, uh, the, I, they were purple, not TCU, man. I can't remember what they were called. Purple. They were like, I, I keep wanting to say Texas A&M and that's not it, but I think they were a team from Texas. They were the, like the lumberjacks or something like that. Oh, uh, uh, Stephen F. Austin. Stephen That's F. It. Austin. That is it. Yeah, they mm-hmm. had a great run, and it just—it's just a a wonderful world of buzzer beaters and last second plays, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah, unbelievable it's, moments. It's, it's crazy that we remember this too. Like Stephen F. Austin, we remember that run. We remember like the George Mason run to the final yeah. four. We remember like Florida Gulf Coast, you know, aka Dunk, Dunk City. Dunk City. That was that was a really <laughs> fun time too. You know, these, these are things you just don't forget. Yeah. And then you always just, you see, you'll see them randomly on, you know, ESPNU or, or, or like a, a, some random channel in the middle of the season. You'll be like, oh, George Mason's playing. I remember when they made that final four yeah. run, you know? Like, and it's, it, it always, it just holds, holds a piece in your mind forever. We had, there was a middle Tennessee beats Michigan mm-hmm. state. Yep. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. And you get to learn about new coaches, new players, like we said. And yes. So, yeah, I just think I'm, I, I'll be honest. I'm not sure. Like what, as far as like the casual fan, what brings them to it, but that's, I know that's what I like. That's what I'm ready to see. I'm just excited to sit down. It's all day. No breaks until it's over. Yeah. Starts at about noon, goes till about 11 PM. Yeah. You get off. A- <laughs> You get a full day of college basketball, and you get some crazy games. Some of the craziest games you're ever going to watch every single year. It never fails to disappoint. It's it's almost too much fun. Do you have any picks? Do you have a, any picks? Any teams you like in the tournament? It is. This is maybe the most wide open year we've had in a while, just in general. There's so many. I think there's realistically probably like 10 to 20 teams that could actually, actually win it. Um, a team, this is kind of a boring pick. I apologize. It's a little <laughs> bit of a boring pick, but there's just, they're, they're just solid in March, man. 
They won it last year. The Kansas Jayhawks yeah, look I... really, really good again. Um, I think they've got a really good shot to repeat. Um, I think Gonzaga, this is their 24th straight year they've made the tournament. Uh, they've drew Timmy, one of the best players in the country. Uh, he's now Gonzaga's all-time leading scorer. He's been there for like 17 years, it seems like. He's been there a long time. Um, but Gonzaga's solid. They have a veteran group there. They could make a run as well. Uh, and then there's always, you know, a team like Purdue has Zach Eady. He's probably going to win National Player of the Year. He's all all seven foot four of them. He's insane. I mean, you look at, I never would have thought St. Peter's was going to be Purdue with, with him on the team last year. Like, how do you... How do you defend a man who's seven foot four, who's averaging twenty two and thirteen a game? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I couldn't do Especially, it. Especially, yeah, I couldn't do it. Especially some of these teams, they're rocking in there. Their center, he's six foot six. He's six foot seven, and it's they're almost Zach Eady's almost a foot taller <laughs> than some of these guys. So it's even yeah, a team like Purdue could, could go. Uh, there's so many teams. UConn, it's always good to make a run. They've got a really solid squad this year. One point was ranked number one. So you never know. But what about you, Sir Brock? What, is there a team that stands out to you? Yeah, I like. Um, I agree with a lot of those picks. Um, some team, a couple of teams, like I always love, like Xavier. Like, always felt good about them. One team for whatever reason, like Crichton. Like I got got a little bit of a soft spot in my heart for Crichton, um, and I like Marquette. But uh, those are just like a few outside of like. Yeah, I agree with you with Purdue. Uh, I'm, I felt good about Kansas. Um, man, I'd love to see. It would be really great, I think, to see like kind of Houston come back, get a nice one for them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I don't really – I don't think Missouri's doing much. But, hey, now that I said that, they might just win it. You never know. That's that's the thing about March. You just – you never know. Yeah. Cra- March is crazy. Crazy things happen. Is um? Would you say do you have a maybe a sleeper pick a to uh sleeper. to maybe make the final four? Is there is there like a bubble team or maybe a mid major team out there that you're just like, hey, it it feels right. It's something about them. It just yeah. feels right. Um, I don't know who. Can you rattle a few off to me, maybe, or like what what are, what were you thinking for that? I don't know if I have the best insight for this part. Um, there's, there's one mid major team right now that I would say is maybe a little bit ahead of, uh, a lot of other mid major teams and that's Charleston. Okay. Uh, Charleston has won 30 games this year and they did win their, they did win their conference championship. Um, at one point they were ranked early in the season. They were in like the, the mid twenties there for a little bit. Um, but not many 30 win teams are just really not getting a lot of attention. Usually if you win 30 games, regardless of what conference you're in, you're just like, you're going to be known and you're going to probably be a top 25 team, probably arguably a top 10 team if you're winning 30 games. And they were projected as a team not going to make it if they did not win their conference championship. They've only lost three games all year. Oh, yeah. And, you know, coming into the conference tournament, knowing they had to win, you know, the, the these these people that make these brackets, the people that predict these brackets, like Joe Lenardi, you know, they're coming in. They're saying, "Hey, we've had an unbelievable season. We were ranked. We've lost three games all year, and they they don't think we're good enough to even make the tournament." That's that's a big chip on your shoulder. They're probably going to come in as like a 12 seed, maybe a 13 seed. We'll see. Um, but they're going to be, I think they could really be a force to be reckoned with. And when you have that chip on your shoulder, when it's surviving in advance, when you're, you're angry, you're hungry, good things happen. Good things happen. When you're desperate, good things happen. Um, that's probably my pick, but there's, there's some other teams like, like a Boise State's kind of been a, a popular one right now. Even a team like Furman, uh, who they won their conference championship, they're probably going to be like a 14 seed. Uh, they've got a really solid squad. They went 27 and seven this year. Uh, there's teams like, uh, for instance, Utah State could potentially sneak in there, make a run. St. Mary's is technically, yeah. you know, a mid-major team. There's a lot, a lot of teams out there that there's, there's going to be at least one of them that that sneaks 
at least into the Sweet Sixteen or the Elite Eight. They're always there's always at least one or two. Yeah, that the St. Mary's one, I think. That one might be the nail in the head right there. I like that. I like that St. Mary's. I like that Charleston teams like that. Like mm-hmm. that's um, the beautiful thing about about March basketball. These teams, these unknown teams, sometimes can just surprise you, come out of nowhere, and make make good things happen. Yeah. Hey, and if you boil it down, all you got to do win a game of basketball. Doesn't matter who it mm-hmm. is. You just got to win. You just got to win. Boil it down against the boiler makers. <laughs> make a little St. Peter's run. Good things happen. Well, yeah. I, I was just thinking the other night randomly. I just remember like, man, I remember I picked Purdue to go far one year and they lost to like Arkansas Little Rock or something like that. Like, heck of yeah. a game. I think that game ended up going into overtime. So, yeah, just unforgettable moments in the tournament. Yeah, Purdue does have a little bit of a history of not playing well in March. So, you never know. But when you've got a seven foot four National Player of the Year mm-hmm. on your team. That helps. There's, there's not a lot you can do to stop that. You you mostly gotta cross your fingers. You gotta hope. You gotta pray that just your shots are falling and his shots aren't. <laughs> yeah, pretty much what you gotta do sometimes. And sometimes that works. Yeah. Now before we wrap things up, I just thought of a question for you. So we're kind of going off the rails a little bit. Uh, now I don't know if there's been any news for this, but a team like Gonzaga, I feel like they there's definitely a lot of love for Gonzaga, but I know there's also been a lot of criticism as like, you know they don't play real teams, you know, like they're, they're kind of in an easier division. I'm not saying that that's true. I'm just you know, bringing up what other people say. Now, personally, I think like there's a little bit of something to it, but I still think to have that much, the, the success that they have had and are having and are just continuing their, their dominance. Um, I, I think, I still think they deserve that love and respect. And I was just wondering like, what, what were your thoughts on that? Do you think that there's any way, they could join another conference maybe to try to boost their resume. Like if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a chance that, that maybe they go into the pac 12. Cause I mean, they're right out there. Uh, they're in, I believe they're in Spokane. So they're right there in pac 12 country. Um, but is the, is the competition any better right now in the pac 12 than it is the West coast conference anyways? I mean, if anything, maybe go to the Mountain West Conference. There's a little more, a little more action happening right there, right now. Uh, but I don't think there's any juice to that statement at all. You know, team teams will say like, "Oh, Gonzaga always disappoints." Well, I mean, yeah, they may not have won a national championship yet, but they've been there. It's not like it's not like they're losing in the first round or the second round every year. You know. Right now, the Big Ten's got kind of a curse that they can't get teams to the Sweet 16, you know. And there are there are Big Ten like Purdue, like Indiana, like Michigan. Some of these some of these fans and some of these people talk a lot of lot of smack, but Gonzaga performs almost every year. A, a down year for them is like making the Sweet 16 and losing there. That's a down year for Gonzaga. Yeah. Most of these teams out there are just happy to be there. So even a team like Kentucky has been down the last couple of years, you know, a, a blue blood. Yeah. Look at Villanova. Villanova's likely not going to make the tournament this year. And they've won two national championships in recent years. And Gonzaga is always there. They're just always there. And they perform every year. There's nothing to be ashamed of about losing two national championships in recent years. There's absolutely nothing <laughs> to be ashamed of with that. Uh, cause most teams don't get there anyways. So we love, this is a, this is a pro Gonzaga <laughs> podcast right here. Yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes when I watch older or not older, but when it's a, a documentary about college basketball, you know, from the seventies, eighties, nineties, there are some teams I see in there and I go, you know, times have changed. That team is like Pepperdine used to be this insane school. And now they haven't continued, um, there's other examples, but Gonzaga has continued to stay relevant, continue to stay like well known, and uh, I I think that deserves to be acknowledged. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look at a team like um like Northwestern, for instance. They've been to the NCAA tournament once in their entire entire program history. They've been there once, and they're they're about to be there for a second time this year. They're pretty much a lock this year. 
but you think you think a team like Northwestern wouldn't give anything to have the success of Gonzaga right now? Oh, definitely. Like, you think a team like Penn State wouldn't give everything to have a team like Gonzaga at the moment? You know, what about what about Rutgers basketball? <laughs> Rutgers basketball would give up every sport at their school to have Gonzaga basketball. They would do everything in their power. <laughs> Whatever it takes, and I mean whatever it takes, to have a Gonzaga-like program, you know? <laughs> it's The Pac-12 would kill to have Gonzaga in their conference. They would do anything. They'll kick out anybody. They're like, Colorado, we don't need you. Like, Stanford, we don't, we don't care. Need... <laughs> like, we're kicking out UCLA and USC, essentially, because they don't <laughs> want to be here. We will do anything to have Gonzaga. So I don't think there's any any juice to uh to anybody really having any criticism of gonzaga like yeah they lost two national championships but at least they're there and they're winning their conference every year and they're proving it year after year like they win big games they win their final four games they win their elite eight games they win their sweet 16 games they don't lose in the first round mm-hmm. like <laughs> virginia like purdue like duke sometimes <laughs> doesn't happen right yeah doesn't happen Alrighty, all good stuff and now one, one more final thing, from me at yes, least. Sir. As I did, I, it's also cool to see, it's the stuff I like about the tournament. It's cool to look back after a few years, and we see those special players that came from smaller schools, like a Steph Curry, playing at Davidson, you know, and their and their run in the tournament. That's also fun to look back on. So. Yeah, it's whenever you see a big run, like that, like a Davidson or uh, like C.J. McCollum at Lehigh was was a big one um there's like rj hunter at georgia state uh with his dad being the coach and his dad yeah. had like a broken broken leg or a broken foot he was on a scooter like a or like a wheelie chair so <laughs> and he, he could fell move around. he fell after and the he shot fell. <laughs> and he fell yeah and then these guys they went on to have at least some type of nba career of course in the in the names of curry and uh, CJ McCollum, they had a little bit nicer careers there. Yeah. But even even last year with the Colorado State, David Roddy, you know he's he's in the league now too. He's playing in Memphis. Big things happen for these guys who make these nice runs. Uh, yeah. And everything, so it's always fun to see. There's there's usually at least one one of them out there every year. Dwayne Wade, he he went to Marquette, right? Like he was a part of that Marquette. original Marquette run. Yep. So. Yep. Well, already that that pretty much sums it up for me as far as the tournament goes. Did you have anything else to add, nicely at the end of the show? Shout out Charleston hoops, baby! <laughs> you know, let's go Penn State. Big game tomorrow night against Illinois. Uh, whenever you're seeing this, this may be past the time that they play Illinois. So hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed that we we have a, a dub there in Chicago. But uh, yeah, shout out Charleston. Shout out St. Mary's. Shout out Gonzaga basketball, baby. <laughs> Let's go Penn State. Alrighty. Hey, everyone. Uh, look forward to the conference championships, and we look forward to the NCAA championships. And, uh, yeah, thank you, for everyone, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>